two of the 63 national parks, leaving them with just one more stop to go. Joy and Brad are with us uh, this morning to tell us more. Good morning. Hey, good, good morning. morning. So how's the travel been together? It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, uh, you know, we've driven 50,000 miles at this point, and the last national park that we have is the National Park of American Samoa, which is about 6,800 miles from her front porch. So that tells you why we haven't been there yet, but yeah. we're hoping to change that <laughs> next spring. So Brad, I heard that, you know, your grandmother is was 85 at the time and she's having this conversation. You know she loves nature and she said that she'd never climbed a mountain and you're like, what the heck? And you just proposed this idea and she went along with it. Is that it in a nutshell? It was a three day camping trip in 2015 that was supposed to be a one and done so that she could say that she saw some mountains, climbed a mountain. That was a surprise, actually. We were just going to go to see the mountains, but she climbed a mountain. And because she had that unexpected uh, superhero-like strength and, and willpower, I sort of became uh, obsessed with the idea of taking her to see more of the great outdoors across the United States, and, and we sure have accomplished that. Joy, you climbed a mountain at 85? Yes. But didn't hurt to try anyway. I thought if I can't get up, I can turn around and come back down. <laughs> <laughs> what have you uh, liked the best so far? Has anything surprised you about your, your tour? And well, yeah, I, we did a lot of things I didn't expect we were going to end up doing, like going down the rapids and uh, wow. zip lining. I didn't expect to be doing that, but it turned out all right. <laughs> So, Brad, I, I heard this has been, you know, traveling with your grandmother has, has really helped you health-wise as well. Talk about that. Well, when I was in veterinary school at The Ohio State University, uh, like a lot of other vet students and veterinarians, um, the profession uh, kind of lends itself to this perfectionistic culture that can um, basically lead to a lot of adverse mental health outcomes. And I definitely was in a dark place. And having that perspective, hearing her life story on the open road, seeing what real resilience looks like, somebody who can remain optimistic after losing uh, children and remaining widowed um, and having to work in a grocery store until she was in her 80s, I realized, you know, we all have a choice in how we're going to navigate the hardships of life. And I've learned how to make a different choice. Wow. Well, what do you That's have to great. say, Joy, to the, to the, you know, to the other seniors out there who are, you know, are just emailing their grandkids and forwarding emails and stuff and not getting off the couch? You know, your advice to other people your age. Oh, uh, I, I don't want people to give up just because they think uh, they reach like 75 or 80. If you feel like doing something, do it. Don't ever you have a lot of regrets, and that's a long time to have regrets. So it doesn't hurt to try. Well, it's a pleasure All meeting right. you both. What a wonderful relationship you have. You can follow their journey uh, on Instagram and Facebook at Grandma Joy's Road Trip. Thank so you. great to meet you both. Best of luck to both of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have Come a good on. day. We know some people in their 50s who have given up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know, yeah, at least one.